How's it going everyone, Taki here. Today we're going to take a look at a really exciting Raspberry Pi based gaming handheld. I've covered a few of these on this channel already, but this one is actually special for a few reasons that I'll delve into later in the video. The GP430 comes with a Raspberry Pi CM3 Lite with 1GB of RAM, 64GB of SD card storage, a 5000mAh battery with support for quick charge, and a 4.3 inch 800 by 480 IPS display. Let's first take a look at the front of the device. As you can see, we have dual analog sticks in the Nintendo positions, but they did not opt for the rubber tops, so you'll need to purchase some caps if you decide to purchase this device. There's nothing really special about these analogs, as they are the exact same ones that are used in almost every single product on the market today. Even though they strangely didn't include a rubber top, these are very comfortable to use. On the lower left side, you have a standard length D-pad with a smooth surface and a dip in the center. This device uses conductive rubber, which provides a really nice retro feel with a good amount of travel. The ABXY buttons are equally as comfortable and should be familiar to anyone that grew up with a Super Nintendo. On the bottom corners, you'll find a set of stereo speakers, and in the middle of these, you can find a headphone jack, a TF card slot, and a volume wheel. On the top, you have a dual set of shoulder buttons, HDMI out, and I'll showcase the performance of this with some screen capture later in this video, dual USB Type-C ports, and a power button. On the back you have a fairly large air vent with a mini cooling solution for the CPU. A big highlight of this back half is actually the lower grip. I'm a big fan of this shape and I really wish more people would use something like this on the back of their devices instead of just making them flat. This is also the first time that I'm reviewing a device with this particular finish. This is a plastic case, but they have a rubber-like painting that goes on top of the plastic that makes the whole device feel much more premium. I don't know the longevity of something like this under heavy use, but it does feel amazing in the hand. When we get down to the overall comfort of the device, it's one of the overall highlights of this unit. It's really a shame that this shape is used in a product that's this expensive because I'd love to see something like this on the lower end. Everything from the buttons to the paint just feels really good. The only thing that I really would have liked to see on this device is a different set of shoulder buttons and potentially a 4x3 aspect ratio screen to better represent the titles that this chip can power. And even though this does use the Switch layout, the bottom joystick is low enough that it's not going to be a huge deal to you when you're pressing the B button. I want to do a quick test of the viewing angles on this display and also check for any potential light leaks. This device uses an IPS display with good viewing angles, and there doesn't seem to be any light leaks that I can see from the device itself. I do want to mention that this device uses a cool temperature display, which is actually the kind that I tend to favor the most. Now I want to briefly go over the software and talk about what you get with this device. In this section, I'll flip between HDMI recorded video and the camera. The base firmware that ships with this seems to come with a large collection of games to fill out the included 64GB SD card. The UI that's used in this image is also one of my personal favorites since it mirrors the UI found on the Switch. The developer of this system has also gone ahead and scraped all of the assets for the included games, so this will save you a great deal of time if you just want to pick up and play device. The biggest con of this device, besides the fact that it has a fairly high price tag, is the fact that it's only using a CM3. Because this is powered by a CM3, you're going to be limited to some of the lower end systems that are already possible on cheaper devices. The thing that I like the most about this device is that it could potentially serve as a case for a more powerful Raspberry Pi compute module. If that ever does become a reality, investing in this device is less of a wallet shock since you'll get more longevity from the device with hardware upgrades down the line. I do want to take a look at the insides of this device to see that internal fan that they're using. As you can see, this is a custom PCB. They are using this tiny fan that sits on the inside of the back case and blows air over the top of the compute module. We also have a tiny Realtek module in the bottom corner, but the rest of this PCB is pretty bare. The main unique thing about this design is that the compute module can easily be replaced at will by just unclipping it from the board. It's this component that you'd be looking to upgrade down the line to get more use out of the GP430. If I had to pick one thing that I really didn't like about this device, it's that the fan is on at all times on full speed, even when it doesn't need to be. For its size, the fan is actually powerful enough to cause a slight vibration in the device that can get annoying during longer gaming sessions. I plan on unplugging this from the board in the future so I don't ever have to deal with this issue. 
Because the emulation performance of this chip is already well documented on YouTube, I'm not going to waste any time doing any emulation tests. This chip is really good at doing all the things that made last year's devices great, with the added benefit of being able to run some N64 and Dreamcast games at full speed or near full speed. Anyway, that does it for this quick look at the GP430. It's a premium Raspberry Pi product with a premium price tag to match. If you have experience with Raspberry Pi handhelds, I'm sure you already know whether or not this device is for you. I personally look forward to what the company behind this device does in the future because this design is a breath of fresh air in our current market. If you want to pick up one of these for yourself, you can find a link to it in the description box below. If there's anything else that you'd like to see on this device, feel free to drop a comment below and while you're there, consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel to support future reviews. I'll catch you here next time with another review. Happy gaming everyone. Taki out.